Greetings, folks. Welcome to another episode of The Launch Space. My name is Brian Benz. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And I'm looking forward to our show today. Uh, we're going to be talking about JBoss on Azure App Service, uh, which is now in general availability, otherwise known as GA in the Microsoft world. Um, uh, really quick before we get started, yes, uh, if anyone wants to follow up any details, any links we show on the show today, go to akms slash the launch space JBoss, where you'll find all the details of the show and a recording later. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to invite all of those people who are on the Microsoft Developer YouTube channel watching us to join us over on Learn TV so that you can interact and ask questions of our uh, esteemed speakers today. And speaking of speakers, let's uh, let's bring them on as well. So today we have Jason Freeberg and Rory Preddy, uh, and I'll let them introduce yourselves. Uh, Jason, you want to start? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Jason Freeberg. I'm a program manager. I work on Azure App Service, things like Java, Application Insights, and I'm really excited to be here today. Thanks for having me on the show. It's great to have you here. And uh, Rory. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, coming straight from sunny South Africa. Actually, it's a bit chilly because we're in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, my name's Rory, and I am a brown-haired uh, individual uh, and four foot tall, and I'm sitting out uh, in my uh, home office, and I'm a developer advocate for Microsoft, and I empower developers to be able to use the Azure platform. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be here with Jason to show you some really nice tricks and toys with the, the JBoss application platform. I'm looking forward to this as well. I've been working at Microsoft for about eight years. I'm a cloud advocate as well, uh, Brian Beds. And uh, I was originally hired way back when for my Java skills. So this is going to be a great show. Uh, I think we'll let uh, Jason kick it off and uh, you can give us some intro. Yeah, sure thing. I brought a slide deck with me here. And so before we get into App Service and JBoss on App Service, um, I hope it comes as no surprise to everybody listening today that Azure and Microsoft are committed to the success of the Java ecosystem and its developer community. We have been contributing directly to the open JDK, starting with Java 11 and 16, and we're also pro providing support for those binaries on Azure. Another cool example is Azure Spring Cloud, which provides a managed platform for hosting Spring Boot microservice applications. And we also can't forget GitHub, which hosts millions of Java repositories and provides free CI CD and vulnerability scans, not just for Java, but for other programming languages as well. We can't forget all of our IDEs and plugins like on IntelliJ, Eclipse, and VS Code. And last but not least, teams across Microsoft continue to support popular Java projects and standards such as Quarkus and MicroProfile. Now, I hope this doesn't surprise anybody either, but Microsoft has over half a million JVMs running in production across its different products and services. And that number does not include any customer deployments. For example, LinkedIn relies heavily on Java. Yammer, the backend of Yammer, is also written in Java. And some popular Azure services like HD Insight and Databricks also run on Java. And of course, we can't forget Minecraft, which now runs on those Microsoft builds of the OpenJDK as well. And so that was just a quick, brief introduction into some of the ways that Microsoft and Azure use Java in its own production services and products. But what about customer applications? For those of you that are listening in, you might be wondering if you have a Java application, Spring Boot, Jakarta EE application, what options are there for you to put your applications on Azure? And for that, Azure has a variety of different application hosting options, depending on where you want to land from the control to productivity spectrum. So of course, Azure offers infrastructure as a service. You can deploy your Java apps onto virtual machines or virtual machine scale sets. And as you might guess by that name, scale sets, VMSS allows you to scale out to thousands of virtual machines very quickly and scale out your deployment. 
But as we all probably know, virtual machines come with a higher bar of management and overhead. So if your organization leverages containers, you can use AKS, the Azure Kubernetes service, or you can use Azure Red Hat OpenShift. Now, on the other hand, if you don't leverage containers and you don't wanna be in the business of managing virtual machines, you can use a platform as a service offering like Azure App Service, which has options for Spring Boot applications and other embedded servlet apps, Tomcat applications, and now JBoss EAP, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. And then, like I mentioned before, there's also Azure Spring Cloud if you're doing microservices with Spring Boot applications. So let's take a deeper look into Azure App Service, and let's start with deployment, because deploying your code or container is often the first step in trying out a new cloud service. So with App Service, you can deploy your application code or you can deploy a container. So if you're deploying code, you can deploy a jar or a war for Spring Boot or Tomcat, and you can deploy that code to a container that the platform will manage and update for you. But on the other hand, you can also deploy a custom container. If you use your own Docker files and you have your own images, you can push those to App Service and the platform will run those just the same. App Service has APIs, plugins, and extensions to deploy from the CLI, IntelliJ, Eclipse, Maven, GitHub, uh, Jenkins, Azure DevOps, and probably even more that I'm forgetting. We have quite a few different extensions. So if you already have a CI CD system, you can continue using that and you can deploy your artifacts using one of those integrations like the Azure CLI or the Maven plugin as part of that existing pipeline. But on the other hand, if you're not using a CI CD system and you want to set one up, you can go into the deployment center, which is what we're seeing here and you can wire up CI CD from a container registry or from a code repository. And if your code is in GitHub or Azure repos, the deployment center will help you set up a pipeline to build and deploy your Java applications to app service. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is that app service also has deployment slots, which is a very nice feature where you can deploy your code into a staging environment. You can also make configuration changes there. And then when you're ready, you can swap that staging environment into production. And then as you do that swap of the slots, App Service will scale out your staging environment to match your production footprint before traffic is routed to it. So that makes it really easy to do blue-green deployments and safely deploy new versions of your code or make configuration changes and bring those into production. Now, once you're set up on App Service and you've deployed your code, you can secure your site with networking features. So you can use a virtual network to secure your application's connections to other Azure services like a database or a cache. And then you can use private link, which we're seeing here in this little diagram, to secure your applications from the outbound internet. So if you have internal facing applications that don't need to be exposed to the public internet, then private link is a great option to secure that application so it's only visible to services and users within the VNet. On the other hand, if you want even more security, you can use the App Service Environment, or ACE for short. And the ACE is a single tenant variant of App Service. So that means all of the roles of App Service, like the file servers, the front ends, and the workers that are actually hosting your application, all of that infrastructure is dedicated to your deployment. So that means you can secure it even more than the multi-tenant version of App Service. And you can also scale out farther than the multi-tenant version of App Service. And speaking of scaling, with App Service, you can set up auto scale rules based on metrics like HTTP traffic, CPU, or memory utilization, or simply by the time of day if you wanted to scale up during business hours and scale back down during off hours. And when you are scaled out to multiple instances, App Service has a health check feature 
that will route traffic away from any unhealthy instances of your application. And if they remain unhealthy, the health check feature will try to recycle those instances to try to bring them back up and serving requests for your customers. You can easily set up auto scale rules from the portal or the CLI. And we'll see a little bit more of this later in Rory's demo. Now, when your applications are scaled out and handling thousands or millions of requests in the cloud, monitoring becomes extremely important. So that's why I'm excited to share that Application Insights uh, is now integrated directly onto App Service for Java applications. So this means you don't have to do any code changes. You can go directly into the portal or the CLI, enable Application Insights, and all of that telemetry, like we're seeing here, request rates, failures, dependency calls, and their durations, all of that information will go right to Application Insights. So you can get all of that telemetry and drill down into any failure cases and use that information to find the root cause and eventually fix that issue. And all of that comes by just going to the portal, turning on App Insights, and no code changes are required for your Java applications. So once you've deployed your application, secured it with a VNet and scaled it out and set up monitoring, you can also save with App Service. Reserved instance pricing allows you to make a one or three year commitment to App Service, and you can save 35% or 55% respectively. You can still scale beyond your reserved instance counts. And then for those extra instances, you'll just be paid, you'll just be charged at the pay as you go rate. All righty, so that was a quick overview of App Service as a platform, and App Service has support for Node applications, Python, Java, which we're going to talk about more, and other popular programming languages. And so for Java specifically, we've had support for embedded server applications like Spring Boot, MicroProfile, Quarkus, and other frameworks if you're deploying a fat jar application, as it's sometimes called. On, on the other hand, we've had support for Tomcat on App Service as well for a number of years. But of course, the title of the session is JBoss EAP GA on App Service. So I'm excited to share that we've partnered with Red Hat to offer JBoss EAP on the App Service platform. So this means you get all of the features I mentioned earlier, like auto scaling, network security, reserved instance pricing, all of those features you get with JBoss on App Service because it's part of that App Service platform. So whether you're trying to deploy JAR, WAR, or EAR applications, you can use those same deployment tools we talked about earlier, like the Maven plugin, the Jenkins extension, or even the Azure CLI. And you can deploy those right onto JBoss on App Service. This is also a jointly supported offering. So if you're having a technical problem, you can file a support case with Microsoft or Red Hat. And both of those companies will work together behind the scenes to resolve your issue. And the engineers will collaborate, share notes, and finally uh, help you continue on and resolve that support case. All JBoss EAP sites on App Service are automatically enrolled into this, into this joint support program. So you don't have to get a support subscription or anything like that from Red Hat. You just create a JBoss application from the portal or the CLI, and you'll automatically be enrolled into the support program. And then starting on August 1st, a support fee will automatically be applied to JBoss sites that are running on App Service. So also with App Service, you can let the platform automatically upgrade your job, your JBoss server application, excuse me, your JBoss server version. Or on the other hand, you can pin to a specific version and then manually upgrade that when you're comfortable. And this is also a great opportunity to use that staging slots feature that I mentioned earlier. So if you're on JBoss 7.2, you can upgrade to 7.3 in a staging environment, 
and you can confirm that your application is working correctly there. And then you can swap that configuration change and that new server version into production and you'll have much higher confidence that your application is going to work correctly in production with that new version. And there's also automatic scaling, like we talked about earlier, and we'll see more of this in Rory's demo. And the application insights integration also applies to JBoss on app service. So once you deploy your Jakarta EE applications onto JBoss on app service, Application Insights will wire right up and you can get all of your telemetry that you need and all of that distributed tracing goodness uh, to monitor your applications. And now I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about some other options for JBoss on Azure. Of course, we talked about JBoss on App Service over on the far right, but you can also deploy JBoss to virtual machine scale sets and to Azure Red Hat OpenShift. So for JBoss EAP on Azure VMs, Azure and Red Hat have jointly developed deployment templates uh, that will deploy JBoss EAP onto RHEL VMs. Now, one thing to note is that this does require an EAP entitlement from Red Hat. So you'll have to secure that, or if you already have one for an on-prem deployment, you can use that as well. You can go into the Azure Marketplace and you can find more information about this offer there. And if you want to kick the tires with this, you can also use the deployment templates for Wildfly and CentOS uh, for dev development testing. And with that option, you don't have to secure any sort of uh, entitlements or support subscriptions from Red Hat because Wildfly and CentOS are of course the open source upstreams of JBoss and RHEL. And last but not least, JBoss EAP on Aero. If you and your organization are planning to adopt microservices and you want your JBoss EAP applications to be a part of that migration story, you can use uh, Azure Red Hat OpenShift, which of course rides on top of Kubernetes and AKS. And you can use the source to image feature to create container images from your source code. So you don't necessarily have to write your own Docker files and create your own images for JBoss EAP, you can use that feature to create some of those images for you and get started. And Arrow, as you might guess by the name, Azure Red Hat OpenShift is also jointly supported. So just like with App Service and JBoss on App Service, you can file a support case with Azure or Red Hat and those two support teams will collaborate behind the scenes to resolve any support cases. And last but not least, with Arrow, you can use the EAP operator, which will create and help you uh, manage stateful instances of JBoss EAP. So if you're running a cluster deployment on-prem, cluster deployment of JBoss, you can use the EAP operator in Arrow to help you manage and upgrade those instances and keep the state information consistent across those different instances of JBoss. Okay, well, I hope I didn't go too fast, but that was a quick rundown of the different options to run JBoss on Azure. We talked about App Service, Arrow, and Azure VMs. And now I'm gonna hand it off to Rory to take us through a demo of JBoss EAP on app service. So go ahead and take it away, Rory. Looking forward to this. I know you're gonna do, uh, you're gonna cover uh, Maven as well, some news about Maven too. So looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, no, so uh, we made a few changes. Uh, the Maven plugin uh, for Azure has been updated. Um, so uh, le let's start, there's a lot to cover here. So we, and it's, there's a lot of nice uh, doodahs and, and, and gadgets and everything. So. Um, I'm going to try to go as slow as I can. Uh, I am super excited because this is a, a really great uh, demo. So first, let's start with um, the uh, how you can get your hands on this demo. You can go to aka.ms forward slash jboss dash uh, pet dash store. So if I paste that into um, the URL here, you'll see that it comes through to the Azure Samples Migrate 
Java EE app to Azure training. Now, some of you might remember this. In 2003, Sun Microsystems came out with a reference implementation called PetStore. And PetStore, you could uh, go into PetStore and you could buy pets. Um, so Microsoft, uh, with uh, a partnership with uh, uh, other developers, created the ability to have this pet store in the Azure Apps uh, service uh, for JBoss. Um, and it, it is uh, a really great experience. And I'm going to show you how to get it running um, on your environment. So the first thing you want to do, you want to go to this uh, sample, and you want to you wanna fork it off uh, there. So I've got the sample, and I forked it into my, uh, my uh, repo here. It's not private. Uh, it's a, a public repo, and it's uh, Rory P. And you can see there I've got my, my repo here. Um, and uh, then you can start here. Now, this, the actual example has step-by-step -step that you can go through all of them. Now, we're not going to go through all of the steps because it takes a little bit longer. The create the database and the, the deploy and create your application server takes uh, about uh, 10 minutes. Uh, but I'm going to show you one that I've already created, and then we're going to live push because nothing can go wrong when you, you live push to our environment using a GitHub Actions. So the first thing I want to show you is I've created the first steps uh, for my Azure uh, app service. So here's my Azure portal. And I've got an app, uh, Azure app service here, and it's running the Pet Store application. I've called it Pet Store RPZA, Rory Pretty uh, ZA. I can go in there, and you'll see there that I've got the, the new P1 v3 servers. So uh, if you see here, I've got the uh, P1 v3 servers here. Um, and these are really great uh, app service plans, and they allow you to run uh, JBoss. So if I go into the uh, scaling settings, you'll see there that if I go scale up, you get the option to use these uh, servers, and I can scale up all the way to a P3 v3, which is a, a really great, powerful server. Uh, let's go here. So I'm on running P1 v3. Um, and I can go up to P3 v3. And look at look at that, uh, 32 gigabytes of memory, 8 v uh, CPU. And I'm running on the, the currently the P1 v3. But I want to show you running a cluster environment. So uh, if I go to scale out, you'll see there that I've manually scaled out to two instances of uh, my servers. That means I'm running two instances of JBoss. And I'm going to show you a little bit later how to do the custom order scale there. But you're, you're, you're saying to myself, how do I even administrate uh, two instances? How, do, uh, how does the load balancing work? Well, you don't have to worry about that because everything is uh, handled by Azure for the JBoss instances. I'm going to show you how to configure them with the Maven plugin without having uh, to worry about manually going and configure each of those instances. So I've showed you scale up and scale out. Um, now I'm going to show you how I connect to my database. So I've got a MySQL database, and I connect to it. You can use Key Vault, but for the uh, example that we've given, uh, we're actually using uh, App Service Config. And in that App Service uh, configuration, I've got my App Service settings here to have my MySQL connection URL. And if I look at there, you'll see there that I've got a database there called MySQL Dash Pet Store RP ZA. Uh, and that's my uh, MySQL uh, database. Now, my MySQL database, uh, which is a, a magnificent piece of tech here. So let me let me show you that quickly. So my, my MySQL database is running 32 CPUs uh, and uh, 50 gigs of uh, uh, storage here. And the, the 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 beautiful thing about this is that I can stop it. So I can lower the costs of my MySQL database if I want by stopping it, and then I can start it up uh, when when I want to. So that's the database that it's uh, connecting to. And let's just see how it connects to. And this is the the, the marvel of the, the new changes we made. So I'm going to go back to my uh, GitHub project. Now, I've cloned my GitHub project. I could do code spaces, but uh, I've cloned it locally. And you can see here's my, my local project here. I've got all of the instructions for the project. It's a basic Maven project. Uh, I've got my pom.xml. Um, and I'm going to go through the project with you, and I'm going to show you exactly what we've done. So the first thing I want to show you is the source folder. And under the source folder, I've got uh, source uh, main resources uh, and the uh, web app folder here. So, so I've got source resources. Now, this is where typically you set up your, your database connection. Now, uh, in my uh, application, um, I've got the persistence.xml. So the persistence.xml defines a, uh, a little uh, database connection uh, data source. So if you know JBoss, the JTA data source, now that's a 
a, a data source that exists inside uh, JBoss. And we've called that MySQL DS. But MySQL DS doesn't exist out of the box in your app service. So we, we're going to show you how do you actually go in and create that. But you're not going to create it manually. You're going to do that with the Maven plugin. That's what the, really the, the, the novelty of the new Maven plugin uh, changes has done. It allows you to create the data sources for you. So uh, that's the persistence.xml, uh, and it defines the MySQL DS. So the next thing I want to show you is how you actually go in and create that. So under the, uh, the folder for uh, scripts, you can go in and you can choose, in that example, Postgres, MySQL, or uh, Microsoft SQL. And I've chosen MySQL. You saw the database that I used there. And under that, you get four files. So the four files, first of all, you got the jar file. So you're actually going to give uh, the application service the jar file that you're going to run your, uh, your uh, connection through, your JDBC connection. Um, and then the next file I want to show you is the uh, data source commands. And this is the command, the CLI command. We're going to chuck over to the app service um, instance, and it's going to run for us, and it's going to set up our, uh, our data source. You can see there I'm adding a, a module, a uh, JBoss module, and that uh, JBoss module there is the uh, uh, MySQL, there we go, the MySQL module.xml. It uses the... Uh, jar file that we mentioned there. So if I go into the MySQL module, you see there that it's just using uh, the uh, jar file, and then it's just defining your dependencies for your module names for uh, the transaction API and the JAX.API. So going back to the, uh, the CLI command there, I add that module. I then add a subsystem data source. So uh, the JDBC driver will be installed. And then finally, uh, I go in and create uh, my data source. Now, uh, you can see that there's the name that we're looking for, my MySQL uh, data source. And it defines the Jindy reference and also the connection URL. Now, the connection URL, that looks uh, familiar because that's the app service URL that we created in the properties. Um, so once I do that, um, I've got the, the CLI command and my connection uh, jar, and I have a startup.sh script. So every time any one of those instances are, is created, even if it's auto-scaled, the JBoss CLR uh, command here will be called, and it will set up a new instance with that data source uh, and that MySQL module for you every instance. Because every time you auto-scale up with Azure App Service, you actually create a new instance. Uh, sometimes the instance can stay alive for a while, but sometimes also when you order scale up or you manual scale up, it creates a new instance for you. So you don't have that, uh, that really that worry of going in and, and configuring an instance because via this, you actually do it uh, automatically. So uh, now how do you get that there? So there's two ways to get that. So if I go to my pom.xml in my project, you'll see there that in my, uh, when I deploy my project using the Azure Web App plugin, I can choose my resource group, uh, the uh, region I'm going to do it, and then I've got a new feature of the Maven plugin called deployment. And in deployment, you see there that I can deploy my WAR, so my web archive for my actual project, but I can also deploy the lib folder for each one of those files. And you can see there uh, I'm choosing the uh, MySQL uh, jar uh, folder in scripts that we saw that the JDBC driver is going to be installed from, I can say, go take all the JAR files, that JDBC driver, go take all of the SH files, and go take all of the XML and CLL files. So it's, it's very, very uh, 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 flexible in the files that you can now deploy. So you can deploy your entire server infrastructure with the Maven Web App uh, plugin, whereas before, you would have to log in an FTP um, and, uh, and spend a lot of administrative time to actually get that working. So that's the first way that you can do it. The second way is that you can zip up that folder uh, th over there, and you can just send that photo uh, through with some of the plugins that we're going to uh, look at with GitHub. So that, if I were to do that uh, via the Maven command uh, command line, I could actually send it and deploy my application and would go in and create my application. I have created it beforehand. So the next thing I want to show you is how to do all of that with the GitHub Actions uh, command, which is also included 
in the last stage of the setup script that you're going to do with the uh, step five, which is set up the GitHub action. So let's look at this and let's let's run it um, and see exactly what happens. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go into my GitHub actions. And you can see there I've got my uh, GitHub actions uh, running. But I want to first make sure that I've got my secrets there. Now, the secrets, if I go into my secrets, you create a service principle as per the instructions in the demo repository. Um, and then the Azure CLI is the JSON version of that service principle. So uh, I'm not going to show you that uh, just yet, but um, you've got your service principle, and then it authenticates via the CLI uh, credentials in your GitHub Actions. So I'm going to go to my GitHub Actions here. Let's go look at the what that action does. Uh, you can see there, uh, I've run this a few times. Um, and the GitHub action runs through a, a few of these tasks. And each of these tasks is actually set up in the XML for the action. So let's look at that uh, XML for that action. It's in the GitHub workflows folder. And I've called it uh, maven.yaml file here. And you can see there that I've got it uh, when you push uh, on any of the branches, it's going to uh, trigger. Um, and I've got also my environment I'm going to push it to, my app uh, linked to my Azure uh, uh, profile, so pet store RPZA, the resource group, uh, similar. And then the scripts that I'm going to be using, you can see there the scripts is my, the MySQL data. So it knows the scripts directory of which script to go in and zip it up and send it through. So it's going to run on Ubuntu latest for the jobs. So all of the jobs that are going to run under there, and we've got a few jobs there uh, with a few steps. So the first job is that we've got build and deploy. And uh, the step one is it's going to check out the uh, source. It's going to set up Java 8. The, the repo does run uh, Java 8. It's going to set up a JDK in underneath uh, Java 8. Then it's going to build with Maven. So you go there, build with Maven, and it's going to clean package and, and skip the tests. It's going to log in with my Azure credentials. You can see the Azure login. And then it just takes the, the secrets, the Azure CLI uh, credentials with that, uh, that uh, repository, uh, sorry, service principle. And then I'm going to zip up the database artifacts. Remember, this is the second way to do that. So I'm going to go zip dash R that, and create a zip file called DB files zip and pop it into the scripts, uh, scripts directory. And then I'm going to deploy the data source artifacts. So I'm going to uh, data source and also the jar. So I'm going to add the extension for the web app extension. And then I'm going to go uh, Azure web app deploy, give it the resource group and the web app name that we defined at the beginning. Uh, give it the uh, DB files zip file. And then I'm going to say, go to the app service uh, URL. And the target path is home site deployment tools. Uh, and don't restart. <laughs> I love that. And uh, it's a zipped uh, type deployment. So I've got all of the uh, actual uh, data source artifacts uh, zipped up and sent through. And then I can actually go and deploy my WAR file. And the WAR file is the uh, application pet store WAR inside the target folder. So let's go run it. And then while we're running it, we can look at exactly uh, what it does. So on the actions there, you'll see there that I've got my, my workflow there, uh, the uh, build and deploy WAR. And I've got uh, the script that has already run there. But let's go build and deploy. And live with demo, let's rerun this here. And let's look at exactly what it's uh, going to do. Now, remember, on push or uh, to main or one of the branches, it is going to uh, run this again. And this is a great way for CRCD to be able to uh, Auto deploy your application. And when it does do the uh, deployment, it's going to deploy to all of the clusters. So what happens is that it, it deploys first to a, a deployment kind of holding cell. And then that holding cell goes in. You can see there, there's, uh, there's uh, Maven going doing its thing. Um, and it's busy downloading all the dependencies. And in that holding cell, it's going to go find all of those uh, uh, scaled instances and go check what the scaled instance needs to be deployed. And then it's going to deploy the zip file. And it's also going to deploy uh, the WAR file. And you can see the deployment process once this is running here in the uh, Visual Studio Code Azure Toolkit. So if we go into App Service here, you'll see there a previous deployment that we've run uh, before. And I've test, test, tested this a few times today. So when we go into the application here, you'll see there that uh, the deployment uh, 
folder there. So that little option there has all of the lists of all of the deployments there. So we can see a previous deployment there once that is there. Um, and you can see that I've got all of those uh, deployments here. And uh, we can right click on there and go view the deployment log. So you can see the, the deployment for each one of these deployments in the deployment section of that. So let's go look at one of these logs and uh, let's see, is that the one currently running? So this is what, no, this is one that is previously done. You can see there, um, it is going to uh, run that tools. So deploy.sh, it's got a zip deploy, so it's gonna extract that. And then once it extracts that, it extracts all of the files that we're going to actually use uh, for our application. And if you're familiar with JSF, you'll, you'll notice there's the beans.xml, faces configs for Java server faces, um, and all of the classes, uh, also the applications there to manage our, uh, our little pet store uh, application. So let, let's go back into there, into the uh, action and see uh, where we are here. So there it is, it's already finished. Uh, that was pretty quick. How long did that take? And it took two minutes and one second. So you can see there, we built it with Maven, we logged into Azure, we zipped the database uh, artifacts, we deployed the data source artifacts, we deployed the WAR file, and then once uh, you have the WAR file, you wanna do some post cleanup, but we can go into the deploy uh, the WAR file and we should be able to see the URL for our application. So there's the URL uh, for our application, and I've uh, opened it up already here. So let's go in here, and this is our application that we've got here. So you can see the, the fishes, now this is running on two servers and it deployed it there to that deployment um, holding cell and it deployed it to those two servers. And I can prove it to you because I'm gonna show you the uh, application insights uh, for the transactions we're about to do. So I'm gonna click on fish and I've got angelfish there and I can see a large angelfish here and I've got some Latin here for uh, for the, the stuff of the content here. So I can uh, click on dog, bulldog and see the spotless male puppy. So let's see how fast those transactions took. And remember what Jason said, out of the box, it's got application insights. So I can go to my uh, application here, to my app service, and it takes about a minute for all of the telemetry to come through. But by the time we get there, we'll see that telemetry. So I can go to my pet store, RPZA application. And in there, you wanna go to application insights. As part of the demo, you do activate uh, application insights. So I can click through on uh, application insights. And you'll see there, uh, it'll tell you how to instrument your application, but we wanna see the view, the application insights uh, data. You can see the live metrics, the, the requests, the server response time, uh, how many requests that we get there, the availability, and we wanna see the application dashboard. And in the application dashboard, it gives you the opportunity to see, uh, and this is a customizable uh, dashboard here, you've got response time, availability, processor, but there's the, the nicest little uh, uh, eye candy is the application map. And we wanna go into that application map, but we wanna do it for the last 30 minutes, because uh, by the time that we uh, load this up, we're gonna get all the telemetry back there. So you can see in the last <laughs> 716 calls in the last 25 hours, I've been really busy but we wanna do the last uh, 30 minutes there. And if all goes well, we'll see the few transactions that we did there for the transactions there. I've got two instances, which is great. It showed me uh, that. I just wanna make this a little bit bigger because sometimes uh, it does uh, battle uh, there. And I just wanna hit refresh there. And there we go, uh, 59 cores in the, the last 39 minutes. So I can click on those instances there and it'll show me the transactions they want. You can investigate the, the failures or the performance. So I wanna go into the investigate the performance here and I wanna see, can I see the database calls for those transactions? So I can see there, I can see the page calls, but I can click on dependencies and now I can actually go and see, whoa, I can see the select calls that I did for my fish and dogs. So I can click on one of those transactions. You can see there, I've done two calls, which is exactly what I, I showed you there, which is the one fish and one dog. So I can click on uh, the category there and you'll see there I've got two samples. I can click through those samples and uh, then I've got uh, two uh, examples there and I can click through that. And now I can get the end-to-end -end transaction time and with the, uh, the product ID, so get a, a, get a, uh, a fish and then get the fish underneath there for the angel fish. And I can see each one of those transaction times there. So let's make that a little bit bigger. Uh, no, let's make that, uh, let's go a little bit smaller there. Let me zoom back there. There we go, three milliseconds. 
So that can get an end-to-end -end transaction for my, uh, and I just did this right now. I, I push it through to my, uh, my scale cluster, and I've got live telemetry that I can use uh, at any time to, to prove to me that my app is stable, it's uh, performant, and I've got my end-to-end -end transactions. So that's the app, app application inside, which is out of the box. Now let's go set up all the scaling uh, for our uh, application. So I want to go back to my application, and this is the last bit of the demo. I've got my pet store application here, and I'm going to go into scale out, which is my uh, order scaling. Let's make that a little bit bigger there. Now I want to set up a uh, custom order scale, and uh, I'm going to try to do this off memory here. I'm going to go scale based uh, on a metric. You want to add a rule. Uh, let's make that a little bit smaller here, uh, a little bit bigger. And now I want to go, okay, cool. I want to uh, scale uh, on a uh, other resource, which is my application uh, uh, app service. Uh, and I want to uh, scale on my pet score RPZA when the transaction count it reaches a certain uh, level. So I want to go app service standard metrics. And I can go in there, and now I can see that I can find my uh, requests. And you'll see there that the average requests uh, w was a certain le uh, level, so 2.61, which makes sense because we only did two, uh, two transactions. So I can go, when you go greater than two transactions uh, for a minute, uh, then please go uh, scale out to an additional instance. I can say there, uh, setting uh, the duration and that checks the average uh, transactions uh, in that uh, time. And then I want to cool down minutes, which basically means don't uh, scale within that time, but that's fine. And then I can go in and scale to two instances. So I can go there and I can also scale. Uh, so that's scale out, but I can scale back because you want to actually take advantage of and lower your cost. So I can scale out. So now I can say uh, add a rule and I want to uh, duplicate that again. So I want to go uh, uh, do, do, do other resources and I want to go uh, app services, uh, pet store, and now I want to go to uh, the do, 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 uh, requests again. But the, the difference is here, I want to go uh, less than or equal to uh, two, meaning that when there's no transactions there, it is going to scale in and it's going to save me a lot of money by actually not wasting that extra instance. Remember, you're going to pay for that other instance that I have there, um, and I don't want to do that. Um, because I'm, I'm nearly out of credits. <laughs> it's nearly the end of the month, and the Cloud Advocate uh, resets uh, on the 31st. So I really am running out of uh, money there. Um, so, yeah, so it will, uh, this is actually uh, going to, uh, well, I don't want to go increase the count. I want to go decrease the count, uh, decrease the count uh, by. There we go. And now when we see that there, uh, scale out when it's greater than two and scale in when it's less than or equal to two. So I can save that out and then I can uh, do some transactions there and it's going to scale out. Instead of me manually scale, now it's going to actually do that uh, order scale for me and it's going to save me a lot of money because those P1, V3 servers, I only get like three of them. I've asked uh, Jason's team a couple of times for more servers, but he says, Rory, don't ever live demo more than three because you ain't going to get more than them. They, these are spectacular servers, and we're limiting the, the developer advocates to, to three of there. So that will run there. Um, and that's everything from the demo. So you can go aka.ms forward slash jboss dash pet store, and you can access all of the things that I showed you today. Um, it's a great demo that we have there. Uh, back to you, uh, Jason. Actually, I'll pick it up from here if it's all right. Um, so also, uh, aka.ms slash the launch space JBoss. You can find all the links that uh, we're sharing today, this one and others, if there are any. Uh, and uh, you'll find a recording there later as well, as well as on YouTube. Um, uh, one question I have for you. Um, Maxi Miel, thank you for your question. Uh, he wants to know if you're running these apps on Windows Server. Jason? Rory, do you, okay, I can take that one. Well, so yeah. JBoss, yeah, JBoss on App Service, it's only available on the Linux variant of App Service. So if you ever go into the portal to create a new web app, uh, there'll be an option on there for Windows and Linux. So remember App Service supports other languages, Java apps, Node apps. And for most of them, you can select Windows or Linux, but 
JBoss on App Service is only available on the Linux version of App Service. So yep. under the hood, Rory was deploying his code to a Linux container that we manage and update for the customers. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, you know, there's multiple flavors of Linux you can use. Um, and also, you know, uh, Jason, in your intro, you mentioned a little bit about, um, you know, with all the different app servers that you can use, Tomcat uh, and others as well. You can also add your own custom uh, server as well behind the scenes. I know some folks in Israel and other places have done that. Uh, and there are some instructions on our docs uh, that you can find to do that. Probably just search. Uh, I'll look for the link and I'll put it in our show page as well. But uh, yeah, that's cool stuff. Um, another question I have for you um, is uh, what, what app service, you showed one app service plan for this. Uh, what app service plans are supported? Yeah, so in the demo, Rory used the premium V3 tier, which like you said, it's a very beefy premium tier. Um, yeah. And that's the multi-tenant version of app service. You guys might remember earlier, we talked about multi-tenant app service and the single tenant, the app service environment. Mm -hmm. So for JBoss, you can run it on that premium V3 like Rory did, or you can also deploy it onto the app service environment V3. That's the newest version. It just went GA earlier this month. And so you can deploy JBoss to either of those two. And both uh, premium V3 and that app service, or excuse me, app service environment V3, those are both available for reserved instance pricing. So if customers want to make that one or three year commitment, they can save that 35% or 55%. Sure, that's great. Um, I did want to also, uh, so what about clustering? I mean, I know you can cluster a Red Hat server, a JBoss server, and of course we have auto scaling. How does that work? How does it work between the two? What's the, what's the options? What are the uh, ways to set that up? Yeah, yeah. So if you're running uh, stateful apps or stateful EJBs with your uh, JBoss apps, uh, today we don't support clustering on app service. We're working on it, but sadly I don't have an ETA for that right now. If you are looking to migrate some of your JBoss apps to Azure, you can look into the virtual machine deployment templates that we talked about earlier. And then there's also that EAP operator on OpenShift that you can use. Right, cool. All right. Oh, let's see. Uh, we, have, so we don't have any other uh, questions from anyone. Um, Roy, do you want to elaborate? I guess, uh, let's see. What should we talk about next? Uh, should we cover some of the docs? I can uh, share my screen as well. And we can go through some of the docs, unless anyone has something else they want to share right now. No? Yes, no? Okay, going <laughs> right now. I will share my screen. Uh, just a moment, and uh, we do have some pretty cool docs that I want to show people that uh, Java developers can use. Um, let's see which screen. Here we go. Uh, just a moment. Three, three, share. There we are. I have too many screens open, so you should be able to see. Uh, there we go. So over here we have um, our docs. If you go to docs.microsoft.com or even just docs.com, you can see all kinds of information that we have on developing things uh, for well, anything to do with Java for Microsoft and non-Microsoft developers. Uh, and uh, this is the first module, Introduction to Java on Azure. But we have a huge amount of docs here as well. There uh, is also a JBoss one. Uh, so if you go a little bit further down, you'll see there yeah. that there is a deploy your Jakarta EE Java EE application that shows you how to do an end-to-end -end application with Postgres uh, database, the flexible Postgres database. So uh, really cost-effective um, and using JBoss. Absolutely, yeah. So um, you just need, okay, so a few things you need. You need the subscription. Azure CLI, uh, Java 8 or 11, the Git CLI, uh, MySQL, and JQ Utility. And then once you've got that, there are several steps uh, to get going. Uh, I love using these personally myself. Um, these are our um, Learn, Microsoft Learn modules, and they take you through uh, setting these things up. There are, you can also, um, when you go through these, uh, it takes you through a whole path here. So when you start with Java, uh, there's Java intro, uh, and then there's uh, making sure you're choosing the right service, uh, whether or not you're using Spring or just plain old Java web apps. 
uh, microservices using Spring. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, the, Joka, the Java EE Jakarta we talked about, and then rapidly deploying and uh, developing and deploying Java apps using GitHub Actions or Azure Pipelines, which is our uh, Azure DevOps offerings. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, JMS, Azure Service Bus, uh, all kinds of information, uh, linking uh, security with uh, Azure Active Directory, uh, using Azure Cache for Redis to build a nice 12 factory sort of app, which is good. Um, <clears throat> Cloud scale, no SQL. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, if you're using IntelliJ, uh, we have a uh, learning path that you can use for going through that. Uh, using Maven. Uh, and uh, Java serverless functions as well. Um, and and that's one uh, I just released right at the bottom, monitoring Java applications on Azure. Now, ah, the cool. interesting thing about that module right at the bottom is that uses only Cloud Shell. So you don't even have to have an environment working. I actually got that working <coughs> with my phone. Uh, I, I, I decided to, to test it out. Yeah. I got that uh, on the Azure CLI, and I just did that with the phone, it uses Cloud Shell there and sets up a multi microservice Azure Spring Cloud environment with a MySQL database with end-to-end -end, uh, uh, application service, log analytics, and all of that set out uh, for you though. Um, and it's my baby. And, 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 and I named it uh, Monitoring on Java. So very proud of that. Yes, so what Roy is talking about when he talks about Cloud Shell, if you go to shell.azure.com, or uh, inside of Visual Studio Code, you can connect as well. Or uh, you know, on your phone, there's an Azure app you can get for the phone. You can use the Cloud Shell for that as well. But the Cloud yeah, Shell it's, itself has uh, the Azure CLI. It's um, got everything. It's got MySQL there. It's got Postgres. It's got JQ. It's got nearly ev absolutely everything. So a lot of those yeah. modules, if you want to run all of them, and nifty thing, it's got an, uh, an IDE in it. So, uh, uh, Brian, type in the word... Uh, code, uh, just the word code, uh, and you'll yes. see there, yeah, I love it opens it. up a, uh, yeah, it opens up an editor called uh, Monaco, uh, which is Visual Studio Code, uh, yeah, so code that, and there's, you've got a, an editor there, and you can run all of the commands, it comes with the Open JDK there, and a lot of the development that we're doing now, uh, we're, we're realizing people don't want to install a lot of the things on their local PC, so a lot of the learn modules we're doing, including that module that I just uh, spoke about, uh, you don't even have to have anything locally installed, you can have a, a, a phone, and you can do all of your engagement uh, via that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, so does last time I checked, this code doesn't work on the phone, though. Uh, does it work on the phone now? I'm not even sure. It uh, depends on the phone. Uh, I think it's, okay. uh, it depends on the, the phone. Um, it work on my iPhone, so. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a Windows phone. Yeah, so here's, um, you know, we've got a little bit just about this. Yeah, so I just type code dot, and what code dot does is open in your current directory. Uh, and it, it's a little version of, um, of Microsoft Code. Uh, which the, the Americans would call Monaco, uh, but yeah. uh, you call it Monaco. Yes. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> the um, uh, this is so the, you can open Markdown. Um, this is my DevOps for Java shop uh, workshop that I've got that you can find on GitHub, by the way. Uh, and um, this is something that I have open. I did this by doing a Git clone into my local storage. So if you have an Azure account. Uh, it automatically gives you storage when you have the cloud shell as well. So you can just literally do a git clone into here of anything that you want to use on GitHub, and you'll have it locally in a container. That and and yeah. I clone a lot of the shell scripts I use to stress test my applications. Because yeah. remember, you're running on a VM there, a very powerful VM. Uh, on Azure, and you write it in your data center. So if I want to test my, my services, my JBoss services, for example, I get right. line of sight directly in the same data center, and I get performance improvements there. Uh, I don't have to worry about any latency lags or anything, and I can do downloads of files if I want to at blazing speeds. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, by the way, it's completely Bash and Linux compatible down here. So this is my uh, actual command line, which I can use different commands for. 
and if I just do an LS, for example, you see the different directories I have here, DevOps for Java shops, uh, different applications. So and if I want to, I believe it's exit, yeah, to get out of there. Oh, <laughs> it exits out of the whole thing. But uh, what, do you, what do you say? Is it, I can't remember, uh, to get out of the uh, cloud shell itself. But I guess you can probably just go up here and turn it off there you go well it turns off the whole thing again but uh you also have bash or PowerShell. Oh, you want to go to the top uh, ellipses there and then just go uh so right hand side uh yeah there right. just go uh, yeah, 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 yeah okay now we're back to the whole oh it actually starts the cloud show when you do that as well so interesting but uh yeah it's there and uh yeah it's kind of cool feature um you know we also have uh code spaces in github as well which is a similar idea but in code spaces uh you go from a github repo and you can actually create a virtual uh, environment there the nice thing about that is you can pre-configure your virtual environment to do that so and it works with java as well so yeah cool stuff um do we have a jdk built into the cloud show you do, we, and if you go Java dash dash uh, version, you'll see that it's the Microsoft Open JDK. Right. Okay. So it's the Open JDK eleven. Beautiful. All right. Cool. I. Uh, nice. I, yeah. Yeah. Anything else we should it's, show? It's, show? We it's, have about four what, what what we're what we're showing is we're confident enough to run this on Azure. Our Open JDK <laughs> is the default JDK that you you get when you you access Cloud Shell. Yes. Um. Yeah. The. Uh, uh, Natalia is asking uh, if we'll ever get a fixed cost per month subscription for Azure. I don't know. Uh, that's that's beyond our pay grade. But um, I can tell you that uh, they're, they're talking about education. Uh, if you're in an educational institution, there is a, uh, a way to get a free uh, Azure subscription that covers most services and has a monthly credit uh, in as long as you're at the institution. Um, and I can share a link for that in our show page as well. I'll do that after the show too. So they could also, that. on the subscription, I think you can set up spending limits too. So she might be able to yeah. set up spending limits based on the subscription. Yeah, I think she's looking for something where, you know, where there's no limit. But, uh, so. I'm so remember, remember that MySQL database? So I've switched it off now while we, while we were talking, and yeah. I've lowered the costs uh, substantially. I have also can use the free tier and some of the uh, smaller servers if I wasn't using uh, JBoss at, at, at the P, P1v3 servers. Uh, you can even use the free tier for a lot of those instances, though. So there's a lot of ways, if you if you have a limited yeah. budget, to, to look at uh, using some of those services. The MySQL and the Postgres flexible options also are, are a great option. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Um, there are uh, different different options, and uh, yeah, here's the Azure for Students uh, link. Let me just bring that over. Bring it over here so you can see it. Get it over there. Okay, there we go. Uh, so you get hundred dollar credit and free developer tools when you do this without a credit card. Without so a credit, don't. Yes. Yeah, you don't need a credit card to sign up. Yeah, uh, and you get a hundred dollars credit to use in twelve months plus free services. And here's it lists all the free services. That's at azure.microsoft.com/free/students. For those who want to uh, find that, I'll put it on the uh, show page as well. And we got just a couple of minutes left. Uh, does anyone want to leave any final thoughts? Yeah, um, here I can share my screen. There are a couple things I wanted to share with the audience here. Right. So this, uh, what I'm showing here, it's the migration toolkit for applications. This is built by Red Hat. If you're migrating any uh, Jakarta EE applications to JBoss or from JBoss to the cloud, you can run this. It runs as an extension right in VS Code. Um, and it will give you a HTML uh, report with uh, story points based on how many configuration changes you have to make. Um, if your application is ready for the cloud, so it'll look for hard coded uh, domain names, IP addresses, stuff like that. Um, um, sorry, I'll stop you there. Uh, we've got uh, less than a minute left, so I'm just okay. going to leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. Thank you, Rory. Anybody wants any more info on the show page, aka.ms slash the launch space JBoss. 
Uh, that's where you'll find all the links and a recording to the show. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.